APS asset management were big buyers of convertibles last year, making up as much as 50% of their Asian hedge fund. And boy, has it paid off. Uh, returns have more than doubled in 2009, one of the best among regional hedge funds. And it's also on the short list for the best hedge fund award for 2009 by World's Hedge. And today we have one of its portfolio managers joining us. Adrian Guer is based in Singapore, and uh, he's with us on this Friday morning. Adrian, thank you so much uh, for joining us today. Interesting. Good Let's morning. talk about convertibles. Uh, good morning to you. You have cut your allocation in convertibles, interestingly enough, to 20% uh, now to 30% uh, from as high as 50% last year. So what's going on? Are they not as attractive as they were in 2009? Obviously, the, the pickings a year ago were uh, much more widespread and much more attractive. Uh, so we, at that time, late 2008 and early 2009, the valuations both on some equities and on convertible bonds were just getting to ridiculous levels in our mind. So we aggressively increased our net long exposure. And also, we liked the fact that convertibles at that time provided the downside support, yet mm -hmm. some of the yields to maturities were very high, as some of these companies were trading, were basically priced for bankruptcy which we knew based on our fundamental research that wasn't the case. So yeah, the, the peak of our portfolio was about 55% about six months ago. We've trimmed that down over time. Part of it's taking profit. Part of it is, you know, these uh, CBs have re-rated. But saying that, we still see pockets of opportunities where some CBs are still attractive and we're still buying some today. Mm, interesting. We'll talk about the pockets of opportunities uh, really quickly here, Adrian. But first, let me just ask about uh, default risk at this point. You know, we have to talk about risk in the markets, especially uh, with the volatility that we're seeing these days. But it just seems, even if you judge it from the credit default swaps indices, that risk has gone down a bit uh, on these companies. So how supportive is that to convertibles? Yeah, obviously, you know, as I mentioned, most of these names have re-rated. There are pockets of opportunities where the market is still skeptical as to the company's ability to repay, and these, these tend to be the names that we get involved in. We, know we do a lot of fundamental research on the company. We understand the management, the balance sheets very well, and the businesses, and therefore we make a different call on the CBs than you would obviously make on an equity. Okay, so let's talk about these uh, pockets of opportunities right now in convertibles. Where exactly are they? Uh, well, there's some that are in, uh, in Taiwan, there's Taiwan High Speed Rail. As you know, we've been shareholders or bondholders for a while, and that's done very well for us. Another one is uh, Excel Step, which is a, an exchangeable bond issued by Lion Diversified into mm -hmm. Parks and Malaysia shares. What, attract, what attracted us to these, to these bonds were, at the time, they were trading at 60% of par value, yet they had a, a secure fixed collateral also trading around 60% of par value, so the downside was very limited for us. And yet mm. the upside, the, the yield to maturity was about 50%. So this yeah. is a, a okay. bond that we currently hold. Yeah, yields of 50% sounds pretty good. Um, Adrian, let's get into these uh, names individually then. You talked about XL Step, uh, which actually pays a 2.5% uh, coupon and a convertible to shares in Malaysia's Parks and Holdings, uh, as you mentioned. Now, Parks and one of the biggest uh, retail players, you can call it, across the Asia pack. It has department stores in China, Malaysia, and Vietnam. Is it worthwhile? now, worthwhile now, converting the shares anytime soon to you? Uh, no, not, not because we're making a call on Parkson, because we're in, in this trade for, uh, you know, the yield pickup on the Excel Step CB. So, mm -hmm. you know, we plan to hold this CB to maturity. We believe that Lion oh. will uh, fulfill its obligation, which, which because they have had a strong support from the group shareholder that has injected cash into the business, and the CB forms the, the major part of Lion Diversified's debt structure. Okay, well, you're going to hold this bond to maturity. You just answered my next question. I was going to ask you if you wanted to redeem these bonds in November since you did have that option. Uh, okay, well, Adrian, let's move on and talk about the other one that you mentioned, which is Taiwan High Speed. Uh, again, uh, High Speed Rail's uh, 2012 bond is what you own. Uh, yeah, it has rallied, uh, which has really pushed down its yield. So is it still, uh, you know, is there still value left in this one? Well, obviously, we've, uh, you know, we've made good, good money out of it. Uh, we still plan to hold it until maturity. In terms of fundamentals of the company, they're not as you know, strong as other companies. Uh, the likelihood is they won't make much money or even any, any returns on capital. But our concern more is whether they can just fulfill their obligations.